Welcome, Bowels of Netflix listeners, to a bonus adventure in the colon. Today, we will be doing a deep dive of a movie we have covered in one of our recent episodes. So stay warm, stay wet, and stay stinky. And we'll stay right here with you, filling your ear holes with shit. All right, welcome to the Bonus Adventures in the Colon, the spin-off bonus feature of The Bowels of Netflix, your favorite podcast. I am Isaac, and with me as always is my fearless co-host, Larry. Larry, how are you doing this week? I have been laughing about this for, I think, <laughs> how long ago? Three months? I don't even know. It's not three months. You've it's lost your sense of time. It's been a very long time that I've been laughing about this. This is the sordid love affair that is Air Bud and his owner and the movie and everything around it. And we're touching all the bases because once Larry reviewed Pup Star World Tour, <laughs> just saying the title <laughs> scares me, we went down a rabbit hole of research into the history of Air Bud and the man responsible for Air Bud, a Mr. Spaghetti Dakota. Which is not his actual name. <laughs> Fuck, I already forgot the way to properly say it. <laughs> he has a name that's real, and you could know how to say it. But Kevin for us... Kevin DeChico. DeChico. That's it. Letterman said DeChico. Kevin DeChico. DeChico. Kevin DeChico, better known by his stage name, Spaghetti De Coco. <laughs> <laughs> so... Yeah, we, we normally review horrible movies on Netflix, but because we dipped a toe into the Air Bud universe, we're the diverging Air out. universe! <laughs> oh, there's a universe. There's 20-some movies! There's puppies that died in the snow because oh of God. this universe. But, so yeah, th- this is a, a special episode. We're, we're going to dive behind the scenes. The VH1 behind the music kind of thing. <laughs> so, Larry, what... Tell us about Spaghetti to Coco. All right. So. <laughs> the man they call Spaghetti. <laughs> he found a stray dog. There's probably. All right. Oh, boy. Basic details. First of all, there is a book about his life that's ostensibly disguised as a book about Air Bud, the dog. <laughs> but it's about him. Now, Isaac and I have not read it, although I that's because I did not want to pay the fifteen plus dollars for a physical copy and of didn't realize not. there was a Kindle version available. So I will be reading this book, <laughs> and there may be a follow up episode you if there's enough to talk about <laughs> in this fucking book. Because I wish we had more time. I, we wanted to get this out after Pub Star. I wish I had more time in which to read this book. Also, oh my god, I'm going camping tomorrow. <laughs> I'm going to be in if a you find a stray dog. I swear to God. Oh my god. <laughs> You have to train it to shoot baskets. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Spaghetti, Kevin Spaghetti to Coco, he found this fucking dog who uh, just, like, wandered up to him in the woods and was super friendly, and uh, he did what any rational person would do and decided, I'm going to teach this dog how to play basketball. <laughs> Because Spaghetti was like a big sports fan. Um, he, it's like okay, he taught him to play. I think it's like the five major sports, uh, yep. which is in in America, which are uh, basketball, basketball, football, football, uh, uh, baseball, ho- obviously. Well, hockey too. Hockey and <laughs> hockey, soccer, baseball. which is soccer is the one I think. I think he only did that because it's easier to teach a dog how to play soccer. Yeah. Um, and, and as we can see, now we'll get into it later, but. The, it, it, anyone who knows the Air Bud universe series of films <laughs> will know that um, this is reflected by the first five Air Bud movies, which is uh, Air Bud, which stars the original Buddy, then Air Bud Golden Receiver, Air Bud, which is football, <laughs> Air Bud World Pup Soccer, Air Bud Seventh Inning Fetch, which is uh, ba- uh, baseball, and Airbud spikes back, which is not hockey, it's actually volleyball. 
Oh, did they? They probably never did a hockey movie because getting a dog on the fucking ice would be a tragedy. Uh, yeah, I'm not seeing one here on <laughs> volleyball. The list of... Who gives a fuck about volleyball? Well, it's a lot like basketball. I mean, but no, now, no. I, there's if... the NBA. There's not the VBA Volleyball Association. If I'm Spaghetti to Coco and I've got this fucking dog, what can shoot baskets? Well, it's the same thing. Shooting baskets as a dog is the same thing as volleyball as a dog. Yeah, exactly. No, there's you your, no. That's the easy. That's movie. the easy way out. That's cheap. You shove a hockey stick in its fucking mouth and you get it out and skates on the ice, well, like the as, fucking parading little monkey it is. As we'll learn, Spaghetti Coco never takes the easy way out. <laughs> he believes in the hard way of natural selection. Uh, oh God. Okay. Uh, and in this time, so he's got this fucking dog. <laughs> we can talk for a year about Airbud himself, but we want I want to keep it on spaghetti cuz he's the real treat here. Oh, he is. Because so he's got this dog that he takes all this time to teach it to do these sports and the dog's really good. He's really like you we've seen him For a dog, very talented. Oh, very much so. I mean, he was he was touted as the Michael Jordan of dogs. Now, obviously, Again, the dog doesn't know how to fucking play basketball because it's right. a goddamn game that I don't understand, and I'm a human man with a human brain. So his dog brain, all he knows is that he can he can na- knock the ball with his big dumb dog snout into the fucking baskets. Well, the dog can't even aim into the baskets. No, it depends Spaghetti, on you gotta throw it right. Right, Spaghetti throws the ball at a certain angle so the dog's natural hitting of it might go in the basket. It, now, there's not a lot of... At least, again, I really wish we had time. I had time to read this book before this episode, and there may be a bonus, <laughs> bonus episode, a, a second adventure in the colon, just about the book. Um, but in this time, we don't know when he decided to get the idea that, like, I'm going to make this dog learn basketball. But it wasn't because he had this dog who was cool and loved balls. It was because spaghetti could smell that sweet green paper. That is, oh yeah. Green bucks. I don't know where I was going with that. As we'll find from our selection from Spaghetti to Coco's book, he's had aspirations from way back into his high school years. Spaghetti he's to Coco. always reaching for the sun. <laughs> Spaghetti to Coco is a wheeling, dealing, kiss stealing, <laughs> basketball playing, dog training son of a bitch. He. I'm dying. <laughs> Spaghetti de Coco is a businessman, and not even a businessman, I would say. He is like a, I don't want to say a shyster, because he's not tricking anyone, but he's like a wheel of dealer. Like, he's always looking yeah. at him. He's, he's got this fucking dog who can do basically the most, the most things a dog has ever been able to do. And his biggest focus is how can i make money with this yes and he Which, thinks far too highly of himself oh my and god and like i have this <laughs> fucking dog that can shoot a basket once out of every 10 times <laughs> i'm going to be a billionaire <laughs> now i read an article <laughs> now save it save it for the airbud episode cuz i've got i'm going to go too much into airbud not enough into spaghetti <laughs> so fucking He's, he's, Spaghetti's got this dog, and he's teaching to play basketball, and once he's suitable, and it, he spends a long time, a couple of years, teaching Buddy, which is Air Bud's name, how to, um, shoot baskets. Like, he, he spends a couple of years, like, perfecting his craft. Now, I mean, perfecting his craft is, is sort of <laughs> hit or miss, because the dog can't, like you said, one in fucking ten. I mean, right. it's the dog does not dog. aim. It's chance. Yeah. He's throwing, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But when you think about that, professional baseball players have an at bat that's like terrible. Really, when you think about how many times they get a ball thrown at them. So, right? Yeah, the average is one in four. Yeah, I'm not. So if Buddy's doing one dog. in ten, if he's a dog, yeah, fucking cheers to Buddy. Mm-hmm. He gets um, all the credit. Spaghetti gets none. So spaghetti <laughs> spends a lot of time teaching this dog to properly do this, right? And and he sends in videos to America's Funniest Home Videos and uh, Letterman, and he was featured on both. He was featured on Letterman, I think, three times, which he touts to anyone who will listen. (laughs) I think he said he had like 150 appearances with Buddy, and I wonder how many of those appearances were like used car lots. (laughs) 
Oh god. And that was that was pre movie being released. I think it was yeah, post production yeah. pre release. He talks about like 150 appearances in it. There, I saw like a clip of a video of him at a, like an actual Steelers football game halftime show. So yep, I've, I've seen that too. Mm-hmm. So he had, he had some real appearances. Yeah, but like he, through, throughout the '90s, Spaghetti and Buddy were just floating around like the sports scene and the used car lot scene, <laughs> <laughs> so, making like, any appearances they could for a buck. It's. <laughs> Spaghetti is pimping out this fucking basketball playing dog to anyone who will listen. Yeah. Anyone who will pick up the phone, it's like, you need a dog that can shoot baskets there? Great. I'm, I'm your man. And in this time, <laughs> now, I, I think you had initially researched this part before you gave me Pupstar and you went down your first rabbit hole. Um, he, like, writes a treatment, uh, which basically yeah. is kind of airbud. Yep, he knows Buddy is destined for the big screen. Mm-hmm. So he starts writing up a movie of like, there's this fucking dog that can shoot fucking baskets. <laughs> Let's make a movie. <laughs> so, <laughs> and he he writes this this movie, which I still can't. I can't. I believe. know. I know. Oh, they were on Full House too. That's right. That's right. Yeah, he, the dog uh, Airbud was house. like the family dog in Full House for like a season or something. Uh, I don't remember. Such so, a load of ass. So spaghetti, because like yeah, and, and this is the impression that I get because there's there's not a lot. We're the f- <laughs> this is the first and only spaghetti to Coco podcast you will ever hear. So <laughs> the 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 amount of research materials is limited, but. From what I understand, when you get Airbud for an appearance, you are also getting Spaghetti to Coco. Now, oh, yes. Obviously, it's a dog. The dog can't show up in a fucking car and get out and be ready to work. You need a handler. Yeah, he doesn't just swagger out of a limousine with his dick swinging around with, like, hose on his shoulders. Like, I'm fucking Buddy. <laughs> now, like, when no, I he, say... <laughs> he walks in on a leash, Larry. <laughs> now, when I say you need a handler... No, no, no. Spaghetti de Coco is not a handler. Spaghetti de Coco is, is Buddy's comedy partner. <laughs> Spaghetti de Coco is the <laughs> Isaac to my Larry and the Larry to Isaac's Isaac. Uh, it, the, ca- Spaghetti, from everything I understand about the man and everything I've seen, it's he's incredibly self-important <laughs> when it comes to his fucking dog's appearances do it with the actual talent. So, um, this brings us into, he wrote the treatment and he, he actually gets this script to Keystone Productions, I think it was. Yes. Who, they have some kind of fucking partnership with Disney. But I think Keystone is a smaller operation, obviously, than Disney. Yeah. But they're still partnered with Disney. But Keystone's a fairly tiny company, at mm-hmm. this point, at least in mid-90s. <laughs> Which leads us to... Our first real bit of spaghetti one on one, face to face, which is a YouTube interview that's about, I don't know, 16 minutes long. It is oh. worth watching. <laughs> we'll probably put up a link. <laughs> we will 100%. It, is, it is called Air Bud colon, Kevin. Uh, De- Decicho? How do you say it? De- De- I don't fucking... I can't remember it. Kevin... No wonder you got De- his name wrong. DeSoco. DeSacho? DeChico? DeChico. DeChico. That sounds right. Kevin DeChico, exclusive interview. <laughs> so we open in a Vancouver park on a rainy day in the late 90s. Kevin, spaghetti, <laughs> is wearing a fanny pack and a lame old dad hat. He's got a bucket hat. And does he have a vest? I think he has a vest. No, but he's got on a long sleeve t-shirt. Which, whoever wears a long sleeve t-shirt? If you put on a long sleeve t-shirt and leave the house, you deserve to die. (laughs) It's true. It's true. So, Spaghetti gets Buddy to lay in the grass while he chucks tennis balls that have had the green fuzz stripped off of them. I don't know how... That's what they were. I couldn't figure it out. I don't know how, I don't know why, but that's what it was. 
So he's just standing like 30 feet away, flinging balls as hard as he can into fucking Buddy's mouth. And Buddy catches him he pretty miss well. One, I don't think. Uh, he misses the one. Yeah, misses one, but catches like eight of them. So, yeah, pretty good for a fucking dog. Uh, and by the way, if you've never seen him, Buddy's a golden retriever. Yeah. He's goddamn adorable. He's the cutest dog. Oh, ever. yeah. If you've never seen Air Bud, by the way, because <laughs> it's very old now, it's about a dog that plays basketball. That's really it. It's actually oh, yeah. the dog shooting baskets. That's that's it. So as Spaghetti's throwing tennis balls into Buddy's mouth, he strains to make awkward baseball commentary, like, over to first, line drive, he's out of there. It's and so it's, awkward. It's really, un- there's like 20 people standing just in the rain in the park watching this man with a fanny pack and an old dad hat throwing balls to his dog. <sighs> it's like an act you'd see on the streets of New York City any given day of day week, the week. And we also, and the cameraman for, I don't know what this interview was for. But the cameraman's very attentive to, like, switch over, like, back and forth from Kevin to the dog, Kevin to the dog, and then over to the fat little kid in a sweatshirt yeah. who's throwing the balls to Spaghetti, who then throws the dog, the, the balls to Buddy. And I'm ashamed to say this, but that fat little kid in a sweatshirt is my 1990s doppelganger. <laughs> That's who I was <laughs> 20 years ago. I was that child. Awkward and fat and in a sweatshirt, <laughs> who would have been thrilled to throw <laughs> shaved tennis balls to Spaghetti to Coco so like he could the throw them at his dog. Spaghetti at four in the morning in a shed with, like, <laughs> the same razor he uses for his face. <laughs> Shaving the, the tennis balls! balls. <laughs> okay. So Kevin explains how Buddy prefers basketballs to all other balls including his own okay he doesn't mention that but i assume therefore oh buddy's balls will be a topic of conversation in this bonus episode oh god (laughs) basketball is obviously his favorite sport okay while holding a basketball kevin tosses a baseball so he's holding the basketball one hand tosses a baseball with his other hand which just bounces off of buddy's face because <laughs> Bet, B- buddy's paying like rapt attention to the basketball and spaghetti's other hand so and then fucking spaghetti says clearly based on this demonstration the basketball commands all of buddy's respect now i was he a, was he a teacher because he talks like the cool guy like he talks like a middle school teacher who is uh, like, trying to be really cool to his students and, like, buys a 14-year-old girl student's beer. But he's also a fucking loser. Yeah, he has no friends. Hey, like, that's all, I, the only yeah. thing I get of him, because it's, like, all of his speech is, like, carefully rehearsed. Like, the only yes. thing he's ever done yes. is thought about what he's going to say in any situation, and everything comes out as if he's, like, Airbud speech bot 5,000. <laughs> He seems so inauthentic, it's weird. Mm -hmm. Like, is he a robot that's trying to learn how to be a human person? (laughs) Like, who has met the actual Spaghetti to Coco? Because we haven't, and we've tried to look him up. I want to... I want to see behind the facade. I tried to find his Facebook. I couldn't. There, there's several Kevin DeChanchos, (laughs) DeChuchos, DeChinkos, Dickios. I don't know, but... I couldn't find the real one. So, right, okay, goddamn. So, Spaghetti says, the basketball obviously commands all of Buddy's respect. And then he says, to the cameraman, breaking the fourth fourth wall. And this is where you first get a taste of, oh, this is like an uncensored interview. This isn't like pieced together in post to look nice. This is, this like is the, just the, the raw, raw footage. Yeah. yeah. He says to the camera, now, if you can cut for just a second, <laughs> unfortunately, I just have to put a little lubrication on the ball. <laughs> and then we cut back to a lubed up basketball <laughs> covered in olive oil. So <laughs> Kevin starts tossing the lubed up ball to Buddy, who just bounces it into the crowd. So then we get Kevin with his fucking fanny pack in his hat, chasing a greased-up basketball through a crowd of Vancouverans in the rain in a park. 
It's true. It's, it's true. so bizarre. <laughs> and in the process of all this, Buddy cuts his tongue. And Kevin gets super defensive. Because, like, the camera zooms in, you can see a little bit of blood. Like, it's just a nick. Like, he nicked himself on his tooth or whatever. But Kevin's like, oh, yeah, it's surprising how rarely that happens. It's <laughs> oh, That's only, like, the second time that's ever happened. The dog doesn't bleed for my living. <laughs> that's not that's not a thing. Except so, really awkward. Does. Yeah, probably all the time. Oh, um, man. Right, no, yeah, that, that's what it reminded me of. Like, a domestic abuse spouse. Be like, you know... I pretty much never have to give her a black eye, only when she overcooks the fucking pasta. How many times do I have to tell you I like it al dente, you goddamn bitch? Al dente. <laughs> That's really what it reminded me of. Like, oh, no, no, he, oh, that never, he never cuts his tongue. That's, that's surprising. What a coincidence that happened while you were filming. Wow. Oh, man. Okay, so Buddy finally gets the basketball and kills it, shreds it up into little tiny pieces. And Spaghetti goes off on something about how, oh, we usually don't let him chew that. Oh, it's, it's so weird. The whole thing's weird. It's a comedy of errors. Um, more emphasis of how the interview's really raw and unedited. They ask Spaghetti a question, and a truck drives by, revving its engine. And Kevin, like, has to just n- pause and not answer. And he looks noticeably annoyed. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> It's, I remember that. The look at his yeah. face is one of like... I know. If I could slice that driver's throat for daring to yep. interrupt me, I would yep. do it. Um, now, so... And like, okay, you know what? If this was an interview with like... Let's say Johnny Depp, because he's a gigantic movie star. And this mm-hmm. was his actions. I would be like, okay, you know what? It's, he's an asshole, but he's Johnny Depp. He probably does 12 interviews a week. You know, he's this massive movie star. He's always on camera. This is a guy who owns a fucking dog that can knock a basketball into his, into the hoop with his stupid right. fucking face. Yeah. He, he, he has the prima donna personality. Allegedly. <laughs> From what we can see of a man who is a gigantic star with that is only going up. <laughs> That's what he believes. <laughs> Christ alive. Uh, so there's multiple times where Spaghetti pauses the interview so he can make a second take of his responses. And it's as awkward as you can imagine where he, he just kind of stumbles or he's like, oh, I really should have started off with this. <laughs> yeah. Very awkward. Uh, Kevin... Sorry, Spaghetti mentions that since Buddy is eight years old, it was wise to get the basketball movie filmed first. Because this interview is taking place after the filming, but before the movie was released. <laughs> just to be clear. Whole theory. Yep. So He's Buddy and he, he goes pieces. into it. Buddy's eight years old. Uh, average golden retriever probably lives twelve to fourteen years, honestly, based on the golden retrievers I've known, that's optimistic as fuck. Yeah. They die around nine or ten. <clears throat> As we'll see. Um, <laughs> so he's like, oh, yeah, it was good to get the basketball movie in the can because that's the most physically demanding. And then he can just fucking play fucking football, which isn't demanding for a dog. I don't know. Yeah. So <laughs> I I don't know how the dog plays football. I, I Does he do the same fucking thing? OK, well, it. I mean, I want to see Air Bud playing football because the movie is just CGI. The The second movie that are that golden receiver is just yeah. a CGI fucking dog. They CGI. I mean, it's a real dog, but they, they, they don't have a dog. Cause, cause air buds long dead at that point. Well, no, they got other dogs. Yeah, but they don't have, those dogs can't actually do the tricks. I don't think, can they? No, no, no. I mean, there's plenty of people who train their, like spaghetti is not a unique phenomenon. There's people around the country who train dogs to do all sorts of shit. Well, wasn't he the first? Probably not. I, I really the, don't think so. He's the first one to monetize it. <laughs> yeah, the first one that <laughs> happened to lot. get famous. I know, yeah. Now, I don't know if this is true, but I heard a story that um, Gary Coleman... It was initially a movie about Gary Coleman, and they replaced him with Air Bud, but that may have been a joke. Wait, article. what? No, no, that can't be true. <laughs> it might not be, but I... I oh, he's I since passed, be- hasn't he? He is. He's beyond this world. That's sad. Gary Coleman? Yeah, I think oh, he's I dead. He ran for governor while I was still living in California. There was he was in the governor's race with Arnold Schwarzenegger. 
<laughs> and I was in California, and I was 13, and that's when I realized politics is bullshit. <laughs> and it's only gone uphill from there. I but know. That's a different adventure to a different colon. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. So, Kevin, because we're discussing Buddy's aging, mm-hmm. brings up continuing Buddy's line. <laughs> Which he admits will not be done doggy style. <laughs> will in fact be done via in vitro fertilization. <laughs> the interviewer asks if Buddy has any girlfriends. Spaghetti admits that there's a bunch of dogs that Buddy really wants to fuck on his walks. <laughs> but instead, he just sucks the dog's jizz out and freezes it. <laughs> he jerks. So Spaghetti Coco has been... Jerking off air, bud. How, uh, what's, how does this work? He's just I, sitting there in his armchair by a fire and the dog's there on the floor. <laughs> and he's thinking, like, if I let Buddy fuck, he's going to become... Th- this is this is the idea of a man. He's It's it's a man who... Now, okay, all right. I, I, I don't want to call... We're, we're poking a lot of fun here. But I'm sure the man legitimately loved his dog. Of course he does. I have a dog. I talk about him all the fucking time. I'm sure you love it. A- and I'm sure he legitimately loved Air Bud. However, <laughs> his primary concern is, how can I make the most money out of Air Bud? Yes. I, you can love, you can love, I mean, that people, that people like that with children, too. It doesn't, you know, I, I'm not going to diminish his love for his dog. However, <laughs> numero uno is... <laughs> What is gonna if I if I let Buddy fuck he will become a less effective basketball player, and right. I'm not kidding. This is out of the spaghetti's mouth. It's <laughs> basically what he says. Because like he says too about how he can't have another dog in the house because it'll make Buddy less uh, uh, right, competitive. Yeah. That, <laughs> that's why play. he doesn't he doesn't want to raise Buddy's pups alongside of Buddy. Because it will make Buddy less competitive. So his plan Which is... Which that's... That sounded like the biggest load of horse shit I've ever heard. His plan how is to jerk Buddy off instead. How... Because I've seen... If you've seen Jackass 2, I think it is, you see the horse semen milking process. Where oh, they have God. a fake horse vagina and then Steve-O drinks some horse cum, whatever. Good times. Ew. Or Pontius. I forget who it was. But it's great. Um, anyway. Is there a fake dog vagina... Or does Spaghetti just get there with his thumb and, like, pointer finger and just jerk the dog off? Or is there... I don't know. Just, I, just, I, how do you get dog semen? From what I'm seeing of Spaghetti, from, like, the things I've, I've, I've watched and observing his behavior, I imagine he just jerked Buddy off and it was very professional. <laughs> it was like, if you go to, like, if this was a real thing... If you would, like, go to a sperm bank, and you would, like, get one of the nurses to jerk you off, and it was, like, the least sexy thing in the world. Nurses do not jerk you off at a sperm bank. I'm saying if they did, right? It would be, like, a super, like, not sexy, just sort of, like, all right, let's get this over with. You're thinking of a rub-and-tub massage parlor. (laughs) Oh, my mistake. (laughs) I get those confused. Yeah. Yeah, please. I call them sperm banks. I mean, as one who frequents those establishments... (laughs) I've never been to one. I've been to five. No, that's a lie. <laughs> ah, that's a lie. <laughs> Can you tell I'm single? Um, yeah, no, so I, I imagine he's just jerking the dog off. <laughs> I need to know. I really, if I die not knowing, I'll be very upset. So, so now, the real, <laughs> the real story to me here is <laughs> how much of Buddy's cum... He has. Right. It's 11 vials. <laughs> 11 vials of Buddy's cum. 11 vials. 11. Now, I don't know how big these vials are. Probably like a two liter of cola, right? <laughs> <laughs> but it's 11 vials of Buddy's cum, and they're stored, according to this one article that we'll touch on a little bit later, um, at the International Canine Semen Bank. Oh, God, that's a thing? That's a thing, yeah. No! So there is, to this day, there is some of Buddy's frozen cum just waiting to be used 
for the third generation Ooh. of AirPods puppies. That's that's got to be like a high rollers, like the billionaires club kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Like you're like, oh, I'm gonna have like uh, an you know uh, original Jack Daniels whiskey from 1887. It's gonna cost a hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> no, I want a shot of Air Buddies cum. I don't care how much it costs. I want a shot of it. I want to shoot it. This. <laughs> This is 96 Bud Cum. This is a good year for his cum. Um, good year. Yeah, I imagine... I, I imagine and milked? Well, spaghetti, I think... He must own it. Or, and I don't know if it's like a donation thing there. I'm sure he owns the rights to it. Yeah, he wouldn't so, sign away the rights to Buddy's cum. So, if spaghetti gets on his deathbed, I need one of you listeners to get a hold of him, because I'm not going to realize it. Somebody... <laughs> Get a hold of him and tell him we want to buy some of Buddy's cum. Unless he wants to be buried with it. (laughs) Buried with it just like splashed on his face or tits or whatever? (laughs) No. (laughs) But seriously, I'm sure the man loved his dog. But yeah, he's jerking him off or sending him to the fucking dog milker to squirt out some of his cum. Because he's looking at the dog in his armchair and realizing like, hmm, this dog's got a limited lifespan and my appetites are vast. (laughs) <laughs> so he's so Airbud is not even a movie yet. It's been filmed but not produced at this point. And he's already thinking Empire. He's already looking ahead oh, to yeah. the future. He yeah, he's obviously thinking sequels because like we got basketball in the can. Mm-hmm. Now we can move on to football, baseball. Those will be easy. I just can't even. I, I his his drive for success is so admirable. <laughs> <laughs> that it almost drowns out all the parts of him that are not. Almost. But it's also deeply flawed. Yeah, it's... He strikes me as a very lonely man who disguises that loneliness by keeping himself incredibly busy at all times. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds about right, actually. Oh, man. Okay, so where are we here in the timeline? Oh, God. Well, do we want to start getting into the the fallout from the movie? So, yeah, I guess at this point, enter Disney. (laughs) Enter Robert Vince. (laughs) The other half. Good old Bob Vince. The the most evil man on the planet, (laughs) as he's (laughs) known by his friends. The other half behind, like, the success of the Air Bud movie. Um, I believe in Airbud. I don't remember what he is credited as in the first one, but we talked about him a little bit in the uh, the fucking actual series. That, that what did I review? Pop Star World Tour. Yeah, um, we talked about him a little bit. I think in uh, what do we? He's at? probably the producer. I think in the original Airbud. Yes, he's a producer in the original Airbud. Now he writes, produces, and directs them all. So this yes, is a he, guy... he, I think he is the CEO of Airbud Entertainment. Yes. Which is a company that employs people. There's an HR director. It is Larry, there's mind... an HR director at Airbud Entertainment. Mind boggling. Ugh. Uh, he, yeah, he, uh, so his first foray into actually directing, by the way, is MVP, Most Valuable Primate. Because <laughs> in the Airbud universe is various spinoffs. One of which is a movie about fucking monkeys, which wait, wait, wait. fucking monkeys or no, fucking monkeys? Well, I mean, I don't. We didn't look at like if there's monkey cum stored somewhere, but um, <laughs> it, there's most valuable primate, most vertical primate, most extreme primate. What? There's just all so so. This man, he, it's it's. I feel like he's the the mirror image. He is the man. He is the shadow spaghetti to Coco casts. <laughs> Because he himself sees, like, the vast potential that is Airbud. But the difference is he has the power <laughs> yes. to seize the reins and drive the ship. We can drive ships with reins. And Whereas Spaghetti is just jerking off his golden retriever by his fireplace, mm-hmm. not seizing the reins. <laughs> now, Robert Vince, he, because he has a hand, he, he becomes sort of the de facto, like, over time... He becomes the de facto go-to man for Disney for all things Airbud. Everything in the Airbud universe, including Airbud TV, 
which I didn't have a lot of time to look into, but holy Christ, Isaac, we got to talk about that off the air because it's amazing. No. Um, and, and so th- th- he he becomes sort of the go-to guy, and when, when, when shit starts to go down, because th- this story does not have a happy ending for Spaghetti, <laughs> um, he he becomes the face man who, who eats all the bile for on Disney's behalf. Um, so yeah, uh, Air Bud comes out at, on $3 million budget, which is fairly cheap for the time even still it's fairly cheap makes 25 million um huge success especially for Di- this for disney this is a big win. right yeah this is a huge win because now they're seeing oh my god we can fucking put a dog in a movie and it makes millions <laughs> now <laughs> meanwhile buddy loses a leg to cancer <laughs> <laughs> oh so it's sad spaghetti's got this three-legged dog and I have in I have a story pulled up from the nineteen ninety seven Chicago Tribune <laughs> where <laughs> Disney spokeswoman Terry Curtin said on Wednesday he is still able to shoot baskets <laughs> adding Disney hopes to get Deco- uh DeCoco to bring Buddy to Burbank so his quote unquote heroic story can be told. So this is the public face Disney puts on that we're gonna <laughs> We're gonna, you know, we we've got we've got Buddy is a member of the family, Disney family, and we're gonna keep making movies with Buddy. Now, meanwhile, <laughs> in the heart of the Death Star, <laughs> everyone who had to make fucking Air Bud has had to deal with Spaghetti to Coco, <laughs> and <laughs> he's he's calling them. Saying, hey guys, my royalty checks haven't showed up yet. <laughs> and Robert Vince is like, what are you talking about? <laughs> the dog, it's not, I don't know the details because Spaghetti won't talk about it. And Disney, obviously being Disney, reveals nothing. Um, right, yeah. I'm sure it was settled behind the scenes long ago. But there, the, the story seems to be that from the one article now we've got we've got an article pooch comes to shove now isaac i know you have that pulled up and highlighted yeah um which is where we we the general public start to see we start to peel back the veil of the drama surrounding spaghetti so picture this put yourself in this frame of mind as this article comes out you've got spaghetti's got this three-legged dog he doesn't have the puppies yet because remember he doesn't want to compete with the attention <laughs> with the puppies. He doesn't want Airbud to lose his edge. So now he's got all this dog semen he's got to quickly inject into these fucking lady dog vaginas. <laughs> because he needs these puppies stat because Airbud's got three fucking legs. And this is 97 where Disney ain't want no three-legged dog for their fucking movies. Um, and he's calling he's calling Robert Vince's cell phone asking for his fucking checks because like Vince was the poor son of a bitch who drew the straw to be spaghetti's handler he's calling he's calling robert vince about his fucking checks and robert's like there's no checks coming what are you talking about so spaghetti's angry he's got no money his dog's missing a leg and take it away the audience it's just get it it's just gonna get weirder Oh my God. It just gets weirder from here. The story of Spaghetti to Coco has more twists and turns than most of the movies we review. It really does. <laughs> God. Um, all right, so should I should I get into the details of these uh, uh, articles I have? <laughs> yeah, let's do it, man, because oh, we, we brought, reached that point in the timeline. Okay, so... <laughs> um, yeah, so De Coco says in an interview to E! News, um, that he was promised 10% of the movie's net profits. Since Airbud cost $4 million to make, $3 million, I assume, for the budget, $1 million probably for advertising, uh, and grossed about $25 million, 10% of that, he's owed about $2 million. Uh, and then we get some quotes from Mr. Robert Vince at the helm of the Death Star. <laughs> I personally like Kevin, producer Robert Vince says, but he's not a businessman. He trained the dog, so I wouldn't be surprised if he doesn't understand these practical things. So that's cold. <laughs> so my my guess is 
he didn't sign a contract or he signed a terribly written contract. Yes. His fucking Spaghetti de Coco just walked in with his fucking dog and his basketball and signed whatever pages were stuffed under his nose. <laughs> Robert Vince says <laughs> that he has not received a formal complaint and will not comment on Spaghetti de Coco's specific claims. And this is from an Entertainment Weekly article. Pooch comes to shove, specifically. Pooch comes to shove. Which, god damn, that's a great headline. And at this point, and this article came out in April 3rd, 1998. So this was about a year after Airbud was released, actually. So this is getting further away from the immediate timeline. But at this point, April 3rd, 1998, Spaghetti to Coco reveals he's frozen buddy sperm. <laughs> froze it four years ago. In 94, and he's since bred at least one vial of that sperm with a dog in Cleveland. And now he's teaching three of Buddy's 13-week-old puppies all of their father's sporting tricks. And he's got to ramp it up now, because now Disney has their claws in it, and they're real- they've revealed they're not willing to play ball. <laughs> yep. Obvious pun is obvious, but... And so, also at this point, I think it's either done or in production... The second Airbud, yes. Golden Receiver, is is yep. Where they've they've gotten another dog. They found a fucking dog that can catch a fucking football, <laughs> and they found some CGI guys who can make it look good. So that's in the works. That that because Golden Receiver came out in ninety eight. Mm-hmm. So by April third ninety eight, it was probably in post production. Yeah. So cause... fucking Robert Vince, Robert Vince moved on. He's like, your dog lost a fucking leg. You're hounding me about the money. Get the fuck out of here, spaghetti. We're making more movies. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> to which Spaghetti to Coco responds, All right, I'm taking my dog. I'm taking Buddy. I'm making my own fucking movie. It's going to be called Air Bud Next Generation. And it's going to be a cross between Ferris Bueller's Day Off and Home Alone. <laughs> and it's going to star one of Buddy's test tube puppies. The one that looks most like him. Yes. And from the uh, E! News article, that comes as news to Robert Vince, who says Keystone owns the Airbud name. <laughs> so he's just leaning back in his chair like, yeah, make your movie. I'll sue the fucking shit out of you. <laughs> Cue the dumbest legal battle <laughs> in the history of planet Earth. And it's, it's revealed here that Spaghetti has no fucking idea <laughs> how actual contracts work. But Spaghetti responds that he has called his company, which <laughs> right. he, he's for, he made like a little LLC when he first got on the Letterman show with the goddamn dog in like the early 90s. That's called Airbud Production since 1991. So therefore, DeCoco claims he has the rights to the Airbud name. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he does not, as we'll find out. Robert Vince, his response is great. He says... That doesn't make any sense. No company spends millions of dollars developing a movie without owning the rights to it. Which could either mean one of two things. Either Robert Vince covered his ass, got the rights to the name, and Spaghetti is a fucking moron. Which is very likely. Or Robert Vince is just as dumb as Spaghetti. And did not secure the rights to the Airbud name. And is now in full panic mode when he hears about the Ferris Bueller Home Alone sequel. And he's like, oh shit! I like, uh, I just in my head he gets off of that phone call with the interview call. And he just dials up Maria in in legal department. Yes! Maria, we gotta go to the patent office today. We got a patent air bud, the basketball shooting dog. Kevin's interview ended 10 minutes ago. He's already on his way. <laughs> I'm going to send Goofy and Mickey out to try and stall him. <laughs> oh, So uh, there's only so much we can really glean for the internet. It's hard to know where the story goes from there. It may have been settled out of court and we don't have the details from it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but yeah, we, we really just don't know. It's it's hard to say because now do well, you have do you have anything else beyond that for the timeline related like after that because um, 
I, I have some samplings from his book, which I want to get to. But the only other thing timeline related is Spaghetti to Coco is listed as with a writer's credit on about 10 Airbud movies because the character of Buddy appears in them. So I feel like that was some kind of behind the scenes agreement. They probably, yeah, he probably made writer money, which I'm going to go out on a limb and say is probably not great. He probably, yeah, but pro- made, he probably made a couple hundred grand. I'm sure he made... It's good money compared to us. But yeah. remember, well, yeah. dear listener... But yeah, not... Yeah, Spaghetti the movie... The Coco is a man with... Uh, what did I say earlier? <laughs> Great vast appetites. <laughs> and he wants his millions that have come to him. So, And you can tell this just by the tone when he's doing this, this, this that EW article where he's talking about, you know, how basically Keystone Entertainment just took a big shit on him. Now... <laughs> And this is where the timelines diverge. We don't get the legal details, so he disappears. Um, he disappears off into the ether, uh, <laughs> where he kind of vanishes from history. Probably because Disney just slapped this big fucking. All right, you lose, motherfucker. We win. Here's your p- uh, piddling writer money, so you never call this office again. <laughs> now go take your dogs which you cannot call any kind of airbud uh, and fuck right off and now in this time also the original airbud is now dead cancer has claimed yes. his life he died very shortly after his leg was amputated mm-hmm. it had, like, he, he dies spread. before the second movie comes out yeah i did he get to walk down the red carpet for the first airbud i don't know <laughs> i hope so <laughs> get uh, fucking limp down it with three legs so Goddamn. i think like what we can kind of glean is that Kevin DeCoco gets to be credited as the creator of the Airbud character, but that's he gets no creative d- decisions other than that. He gets credited as he made the dog who uh, yeah. can play basketball and the idea of it being a movie character, and that's it. So that he gets his money, and he quiets down, <laughs> at least on the legal front, and goes off into the sunset, where Robert Vince <laughs> takes up the reins of the Airbud franchise and is as we learned from my review of pop star doing it to this day and is probably one of the richest men in Disney, but that is neither here nor there. The air bud, I think it's called air bud entertainment.com. Yeah. The website, Uh just the fucking picture of him at the bottom with his, like his greasy curly hair. (laughs) Oh, and you know, he's just had his fucking dick sucked (laughs) by a Thai 14 year old boy. He is the villain. Allegedly. He Allegedly. Is the 100% the villain of this story. Like, Robert Vince, he represents Disney, which is one of the most, gotta be one of the most evil companies on the fucking planet. Right. And he's, he's making, making his millions off of kids' movies, too. Which right. almost always feels exploitative. Mm-hmm. Every once in a while, there's a good kids' movie. Even the first Air Bud, which is light years in quality ahead of the rest of them, yes. is not a good movie. No, it sucks. No. But compared to the rest of them, it's fucking Oscar worthy. <laughs> but, so, okay. I, I do have some details from Spaghetti to Coco's book, mm-hmm. which is titled and is available on Amazon, Kindle, and print version, Go Buddy, the Air Bud Story. Which I am going to try and read. I don't know if you can get through it because i skimmed the first 10 pages which were available on preview from which i pulled the selection i'm going to read <laughs> none of the first 10 pages contain anything about Airbud. it's the spaghetti to coco story <laughs> but okay i want to name five chapters that i selected chapter titles <laughs> that i i couldn't believe <laughs> <clears throat> so these, these are random chapters. This is about 20. I just picked the five best. Networking at the dumpster. <laughs> Never cry wolf. What the... F- Tetherball, anyone? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> and now, if you recall how Spaghetti to Coco acquired Buddy Seaman one way or another, these are my two favorite chapter titles. <laughs> I'm going to pump you up. <laughs> 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 and simply fertility <laughs> no you're a fucking liar yes it's true go look it up oh my god <laughs> and now 
We'll be reading a brief selection from chapter two of Go Buddy, the Airbud story by Spaghetti to Coco. <laughs> <clears throat> I imagine every high school is the same. The sophomore boys ogle the foxy senior girls from afar, but few dare to cross that magical barrier Jeez. and actually talk to them. Jesus Christ. In our school, no one stood out more than Carrie Russell. She was a gorgeous blonde with the cutest butt I had ever seen. I was love struck. <laughs> no! Stop it! Stop but she it. was taken by a senior. Just like in some teen movie, she dated the senior class president at San Mateo High, Pete Lindsay. <laughs> but man, oh man, was I smitten. As was just about every other guy in our school with a pulse. When news spread that she had broken up with Pete, I remember being so happy. As I sat in biology next to a longtime friend, Dave Stanton, talking about Carrie, I told Dave that I was going to ask her out. This is, this is a selection from <laughs> Go Buddy, the Air Bud story. <laughs> Dave Stanton laughed out loud. Good luck. You've got as much chance of dating her as you do as being the president of the United States. <laughs> to which Donald basketball. To which Donald Trump replied, Oh yeah, we'll see about that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but at the the end of that epic paragraph. You've got as much chance of dating her as you do of being the president of the United States. <laughs> to me, it was game on. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he has a wife. <laughs> I don't think so either. I don't. He definitely doesn't have children. I don't think he's he has got a wife. vials of buddy's semen. It's yeah, yeah. He's got buddy's cum. <laughs> so this, the, the, I love on Amazon too. The book says, um, the, "Here's the description of the book, clearly written by himself." So it must be from the dust jacket. The world knows Buddy, aka Air Bud, is the golden retriever, quote unquote, iconic character popularized in 13 motion pictures, but I knew him as Buddy, a pinecone-toting, disheveled mess of a stray dog <laughs> I found in the Sierra Nevada. Buddy's story is much more than the story of a stray who ended up in a movie. Now, this is all standard stuff, right? Right. This guy talking about his dog and, and his air bud. Um, it's also the story of a boy, that's me, and his dog... <laughs> I rescued him from abandonment in the mountains, but Buddy also rescued me, giving my life purpose, direction, and a profound sense of relationship I'd been missing. Our bond saved us both, and together we forged a path from that dirt trail to the old mine shaft to international sensation on the silver screen. His eventual <laughs> fall to cancer, but not before siring a litter of puppies that would carry on his iconic legacy for generations to come. Oh, for God's sake, This spaghetti. is a man who he... <laughs> He takes himself, he holds himself in incredible regard. <laughs> yes. No, which I, is... I find kind of admirable because I hate myself with the fiery passion. However, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, he's I'm also in a similar boat to you. unaware of his place in the world. <laughs> yes, that's the issue. <laughs> <laughs> this, it's, this spaghetti to cook, it would be like, <laughs> the comparison would be as if we treated this podcast like it was Mark Maron's podcast. And even that is... Even, yeah. Not even us, because we're too small time. Like, he, Spaghetti's... He had a... There was a brief moment where Airbud fever overcame this nation. Many of you oh, were probably did. not alive for that time, because we're getting old. But it... it there was a time where Airbud was on top of the world, and Spaghetti felt that he, too, was then on top of the world. <laughs> <laughs> right. We're... Yeah. It's like, um... Like Macaulay Culkin's fucking parents thinking they had anything to do with anything, basically. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Like, no, Macaulay Culkin was just cute as fuck and uh, was fairly good at acting. His parents had nothing to do with anything. I, yeah. I don't know. I mean, Spaghetti had a little more to do. He did do the training and yeah. he developed the... But still, still. He got come his on. It's a ball. He got it's his a money. ball shooting a basket. It's not that amusing. No, no. So... <laughs> Like, like we said, Robert Vince goes on to become an incredibly successful Air Bud creator of the movies, and he, Spaghetti, falls out of Disney's history. 
Um, especially now, I think they shied away from everybody because they were tired of paying him his fucking check for 140 grand. Um, because it goes on to Air Buddies, and now we're in shit like Pop Star. Like we're way off the rails. And he as- got credit for some Air Buddies. I think his last one was 2012 Treasure Buddies. Holy shit, he's still getting credited. Wow. Yeah, he, he got credited pretty late. It's all on IMDb. He has an IMDb page. Yeah, I, that I, I, I my friend's dad, who was like a, an extra in four movies, has an IMDb page. So that doesn't surprise me. Yeah, um, right. But yeah, he's credited. And well, okay, that that was the thing I was really hoping for because, like, as we've seen with Steven Seagal, mm-hmm. you can edit your own IMDb page. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I, he almost, I was, he's, he's getting accused of doing a rape. Did you see that? Oh, really? Well, yeah. yeah, I'm not surprised. Not surprised. <laughs> Allegedly. God damn it. It's still uh, alleged. <laughs> but I, I really thought Spaghetti, just being an asshole and hating on Disney, went ahead and listed himself as a writer's credit for all these movies. <laughs> but then I went and verified on the actual, like, Treasure Buddies IMDb page, uh, and Spaghetti is listed as a writing credit. Yeah. So that was definitely part of his settlement with Disney. He struck, He got a good deal, because Disney has, like, the deepest pockets in the world. So they Oh, yeah, they could have him erased off. him from the earth. Yeah, they were able to buy him off. And they and so he must have maybe like they were able to buy part of the patent and not, I don't know who the fuck knows. I'm not it's not important now. <laughs> but well the I'm sure the CEO or like there was some meeting where it was like, "Hey, Sharon, would it be killer or <laughs> would it be cheaper to kill him or pay him off?" <laughs> How much is a hitman running these days? <laughs> Cheaper to pay him off? Fine. Do that. That's great. Yeah, exactly. Let's, let's do lunch. Exactly. <laughs> um, so the last bit we have in the Spaghetti to Coco story, like we said, he disappears from history after he, he takes his cum and rides off into the sunset. <laughs> <laughs> um, I found an article about someone looking, someone on Vice, which I have a love-hate relationship with, with Vice, was looking for the grave of Air Bud. Um, because that's what fucking passes for news nowadays. Um, so, and this guy found, got in touch with Spaghetti, who is... Recent well, Spaghetti, because this, this, is, this is, is a recent article. Like, uh, this year or 2017? 20, January of this year. Oh, wow. So this is 2018, January. the year of our Lord. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see here. When was that book written? Uh, I think pretty recently. Okay. Hold on. I have it pulled up. I don't have it pulled up. I lied. <laughs> don't worry about it. <laughs> Um, uh, I, I'm pretty sure 16 or 17. Yeah, so uh, here, here's here's part of the article here. Uh, he went to go talk to Spaghetti, and Spaghetti tells this vice writer, who I'm not going to give credit for because he's an idiot, um, <laughs> that after Buddy died, he had a falling out with Disney. He didn't want to go into detail about the litigation, which concerned who created the Air Bud character. So he must uh. have, they must have given him some sort of, scra- uh, threw him a bone, pun intended. Um but ultimately, he had nothing to do with the sequels. So, like we said, Spaghetti, out. He's out. He's gone. Uh, including <laughs> direct-to-DVD Snow Buddies, which killed five puppies. Um, yes. Spaghetti, Don't ever forget. DeCoco sounded tired when talking about the Airbud experience and said he just wanted to move on. Uh, quote, we've already done everything we can do with it. He said, quote, there's nothing left. He always also says we, which right. I assume is the royal we, <laughs> because he has to be alone <laughs> and now he's working on a program outside of the Airbud brand that teaches shelter dogs various sports the idea being that learning a skill like basketball might make the otherwise unwanted pups more appealing and help get them adopted which that sounds really awesome right i have a shelter pup or, well not a pup i mean he's a, he's a shelter racing greyhound yeah. uh he was a rescue um and yeah, the shelter dogs are treated horribly, rescues are treated horribly. So that's, you know, really honorable, right? Yeah. He's oh, been no. pitching the concept as a reality show or a potential uh, brand tie-in shit. with a pet store. Because he's always shit. chasing the green dragon. <laughs> shit. <laughs> Just what Larry. do you think? He's he has not he has not given up. He has found his place in life. He and Robert Vince would probably be friends now, honestly. Like, putting aside their fiery hate for one another. (laughs) (laughs) Um, He finds his place in life, which is, I need to make money off of these fucking dogs to what does tricks. And so does Robert Vince. So really, they're just the same. They are the shadow that each other casts. (laughs) They are the tragic hero (laughs) and villain of these stories. 
Um, yeah. But at one point, uh, Spaghetti owned, like, a farm of some kind. Th- that That's the important part. Of it. That's what he's up to now. His personal life is very incredibly depressing. So, <laughs> yeah. So that kind of ends the story with, with Spaghetti. is just, he's still trying to turn dogs into fucking money. <laughs> he's trying to do what Robert Vince has made an incredibly successful career out of. Which is oh, commercialize man. a bunch of sports playing dogs. That poor man. Well, Larry. <laughs> the Bell's a Netflix research department. Yeah. Which consists of several employees. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Working round the clock. Yep. We put hard dick on this. We put uh <laughs> we put those two little girls, Darren Shan, mailed us on this. <laughs> <laughs> He's, I can't they, unsee that picture. They had a little that note. My they had a little note pinned on them. This is plenty more where this came from. Smiley face. Um, it, who else do we have on it? Uh, anyway, Fred and Barney. Fred and Barney. <laughs> That's, they, they keep talking to thin air. I'm convinced it's the Great Kazoo, but Isaac just thinks they're crazy. I don't know. They did get unfrozen from caveman time. This bit's going on too long. Anyway, Leo the lion's on a mission. Okay, <laughs> so. Our research department may or may not have connections with a certain person who may have very privileged information, possibly from a national government agency. Their name might be Edward Snowden or Julius Julian Assange, but it's not. (laughs) Or is it? We can't tell you. But we have some recorded phone calls between Spaghetti to Coco and Robert Vince back from the late 90s, when all of this was going down. Yeah, it's astonishing. You thought the government was just monitoring us after 9-11? Oh no, this goes deep. Oh yeah. Disney they, Disney started it. The government came to Disney first. They have recorded phone calls from uh, Alexander Graham Bell, the inventor of the telephone. Mm-hmm. Like, the first phone call. He was like, hey, does this thing work? He called his mother and asked what she was wearing, because, you know, <laughs> phone sex wasn't invented yet, and his mother was only the one with a telephone. Uh, his mother was pretty hot though i bet but we're gonna play these calls for you now in their entirety (laughs) and they're real (laughs) definitely real (laughs) hello you've reached robert vince producer and part-time janitor can i help you yeah hey uh my name's uh spaghetti de coco and, uh, yeah, I just want to give you a call, let you know, um, because you're a big-time movie producer, right? Uh, that is what it, part of my title encompasses, yes. Yeah, that's awesome. So I got I got this dog. This dog just wandered out of the woods to me when I, I was out in the woods bearing a I mean, camping. I was out camping. And, like, I made friends with this dog. He's, now he's my dog. I had him for a long time. And I taught him how to play basketball. Like, I taught him how to shoot baskets. I throw basketballs at his face. He knocks him into the hoop. It's great. He's Michael Jordan, the goddamn dog. Anyway, I think we can make a movie. I think we can make a million dollar, a billion dollar movie. I think we can make Oscars. What do you think, Bob? So let me get this straight. (laughs) You throw the basketball at the fucking dog's stupid head. Okay, he probably doesn't have a stupid head. It's probably a very nice fucking dog head. He's a good boy. (laughs) And he, he makes it into the basket. Does he make it every time? No, 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 not every time. Not at all. Not even close. Maybe like 10% of the time. But like if you make it a movie, like, you know, you film it, you, you only put the good parts in, right? That, is that how you make movies? I don't really know. <laughs> so wait, let, me, let me get this even more straight. You don't have any idea how to make a movie. <laughs> no, 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 no. How good at you were reading contracts? I mean, I went to high school. Let me tell you about this senior girl I dated. She, she had a butt that wouldn't quit, oh, she, and I didn't. I didn't really focus on reading, but I, I can read. I know Spaghetti knows how to read. <laughs> so the dog, the dog shoots basketball. You know what? I gotta say, I had a movie in mind where Gary Coleman played basketball. And I got another one in my back pocket about a, a, a crack yeah, rock yeah. that teaches kids to dance. But you know what? I think we got some. I think we got real money here. What with this fucking dog shooting basketball? I'll tell you what. You bring him around to my office in the boiler room. I, I, I mean, I'll pretend to have a real big office. We'll go there and have a meeting. What do you, you mean, bring you the pre- dog? Pretend to have an office? I mean, I don't know I, nothing about no big shots. But do you pretend to have an office? Look, when you're making a movie, everything's pretend, isn't it? What would you say? Oh, your name shit, was? Oh shit, that's right. ZD Alfredo was some shit. 
No, spaghetti de coco. Spaghetti de cacio. Got it. Spaghetti de cacio. De coco. De coco. Okay, de I got coco. it. Your name's your fucking name's Spaghetti. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you got a problem with that? <laughs> Look, I, I just so happen to to only appreciate men who have two first names. So you gotta forgive me just a little bit. <laughs> so you bring the dog around, and, and I think we got a real money making opportunity here. <laughs> All right, I'll, I'll I'll be by office. Should I bring peanut butter? Are you going to provide your own, or is that necessary? I don't I don't typically Pre- work with animals, and I sure as hell wouldn't want to make a career out of working with animals. I usually grease up the basketball with olive oil, but I'll bring peanut butter just in case we want to do any after the. Oh, that'll shoot make this a lot of. easier. I don't have to bring my own olive oil. Okay, great. <laughs> I like to put <laughs> some under my, my jowl hey, flaps. Spaghetti to Coco don't go nowhere without his own olive oil. <laughs> All right, and I want you to bring a mop, because I only got one, and we also got to be mopping floors while we do this. It's a big-time movie producer thing. You wouldn't understand. <laughs> I'm not barely surviving to pay my rent. How dare you? Yeah, of course you? not. You're a big shot. You sound like it, for all I know. Yeah, for all you know, indeed. All right, well, I'll see you at 1,500 hours. I use military time. It's a producer thing. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, all since- producers... All movie producers used to be is in the military, right? <laughs> yeah, I got a purple heart. <laughs> oh, Walt you're such Sizzy, a brave man. Walt Sissy wants his company to run as close to the Nazi army as possible. <laughs> <laughs> All right, sounds good. I'll be over to see you at your office. Good talking to you. All right, I'll see you later, Spaghetti. <sighs> oh, yeah. All this Air Bud money, it gets buys me the best cocaine. Oh, the phone's ringing. Hello? Yeah, yeah, hey, it's, uh, Spaghetti. This is Bob, Bob Vince. Who? The Spaghetti to Coco. The guy who made the, the million dollar movie with you? Are you that guy what's bringing me my pizza? No, 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 no. I, I, I got the dog. The buddy, you know? We made the movie, Air Bud. Oh, that's like yeah. Multi million dollar right, success. Right. How could, how could I forget? The yeah, many like, wonderful weeks of shooting we had with you on set with your fucking dog. What can shoot the baskets? Yeah, of course. Yeah, remember the courtroom scene? It was all foggy and I had to like train, to, like sit with the dog and like keep him calm and like feed him biscuits and stuff. Yeah, you yeah. definitely yeah. had to sit with the dog. We definitely didn't have to film it six times so your fucking ass wasn't on camera. This is exactly how I remember it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But look, so, like, this movie, like, but a, but a bazing, but a zoom. I, I can't believe how much of a success it was. It's all over the movie theaters. The kids are talking about it. So, like, I was thinking, we should, we should be making a sequel with, with Buddy. We should be making the next movie, right? So I was thinking, all right, we did basketball. We did the Michael Jordan thing. All right, we got to move on. So, next big thing. I'm thinking we call it Raging Bud. It's like Raging Bull, you know, the, the De Niro movie with the boxing and the punching and stuff. But it, it's it basically the same movie, but with Buddy, with the Golden Retriever in his place. So it's a black and white, it's gritty, it's dark as fuck. Like, he's got a wife, a human wife, I guess, I don't know. He beats the shit out of his wife. It, and it, it's a dark movie. It, it's really pretty horrifying, to be honest. Kind of a character study and all. But yeah, that's probably where I think we should go next with it. Kind of a character And you think... Disney is the best vehicle for what did you call it? R- raging, ho- raging, raging bud, raging bud. Yeah, no. What? Here's what I was thinking. I know Disney's been doing all right with their little animated ones, The Lion King, is their Little Mermaid, whatever. I was thinking Air Bud could help lift Disney out of the muck and start doing something worthwhile. Well, for, look, look, Spaghetti. I- I'm delighted to be the one to tell you this. Air Bud Two is. Already in production. Oh, you started making Raging Bud already. That's great. Well, we started making Air Bud 2. Yeah, Raging Bud. No, it's called Air Bud Golden what? Receiver. What? So, the dog... That, that, that sounds horrible. The dog is going to play it. football. I don't get it. I still don't get it. <laughs> okay, you know how you throw the basketball at the dog and he uses yeah, his big stupid yeah. fucking face? By the way, that dog pissed on every pair of fucking shoes I got. I'll be sending you the bill in the mail for that because Wait, what? He 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 pissed, he ruined every fucking Armani shoe that I stole to get this job in the first place. And you know how you throw the ball at the stupid fucking dog's head and he he yeah, knocks in my the life for the last 7 years. We're gonna, well, it's going to be the same thing but this time he's going to play football. 
Yeah, I don't see how that really develops his character. He has no fucking character. He's a dog. No, he's going to be Robert De Niro, but a dog. That's his character. <laughs> Spaghetti, are you sitting down? I think you should of course sit- I'm sitting down. You should sit down for this. All right, all right. I'm sit- I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm in my recliner. I'm gonna recline. I'm reclined now. I'm ready. Look, to say that you have now, Spaghetti, you know that I'm very fond of you, right? <laughs> Who's say- not fond of Spaghetti? <laughs> to say that you have shit for brains would be inaccurate because no one would ever mistake your thick, meat-headed skull for the modern feat of engineering that is a toilet. That has got to, to be the dumbest movie idea I ever fucking heard of, except for that one that was supposed to be, like, fucking, what was it, Full House? and I don't even know. I, if something about a crack rock. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I, I don't know what you're trying to say to me. Look, you're I, trying to say... I got moved out of the boiler room and into a fancy office. I get all the cocaine and whores I want. I've got more money than I'll ever know what to do with. And I, we get, we're keeping, we're, we're, we're staying the course. It's golden receiver. It's not going to be fucking, it's not going to be raging butt. Get that shit out of your fucking head. Well, you know, I think it's going to be interesting for you to try to make a sequel to Air Bud without Air fucking Buddy, the dog that made the whole franchise in the beginning because you ain't going to have that fucking dog because I ain't going to let you have that fucking dog unless we make Raging Bud. The Robert De Niro story with the dog. First of all, do you know how many Disney Stormtroopers I can have at your fucking apartment by 6 p.m. tonight? Look at the clock. What time is it? I don't know how to read a cl- no <laughs> clock. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm well aware of your inability to read, but that's neither here nor there. I, could have- I know the sun has not gone down yet. I could have what that matters. I could have six Disney Stormtroopers kicking in your door and kidnapping that fucking dog by six p.m. tonight. But you know what's even easier? It's just filling my fucking pot. I got so many golden retrievers that are just coming out of my dick hole. Spaghetti. I'll just replace the dog. Okay. I don't need Al oh, Bud. Yeah. I have got Chinese little baby interns chained to computers that can make this new computer generated images of a dog doing anything I want. Including licking my balls. And I might even get a real dog to do that just because I can't. You're disgusting, Bob. You you go ahead. You'll see how well that works out for you. And we'll see how well Raging Bud starring Air Buddy, the best goddamn dog that ever was a dog who's going to more or less be Robert De Niro, but a dog. We're going to see how that goes. Oh, it's going to yeah. go great. <laughs> I look forward to reading your script, Spaghetti. Oh, yeah. I'm typing it now. Clickety-clackety-clack-clack-clack. On the old typewriter, the Remington 987. <laughs> I've been typing out the script the whole time I was talking to you. Because that's how much you, you're worth my time. You're not worth anything at all. I've been writing a script instead. <laughs> Scene one. Out exterior. Nighttime. Bud stands in the rain <laughs> at a payphone talking to his wife. She's pregnant for the third time and she's tired of never seeing him at home. <laughs> Spaghetti, you are so fucked. You couldn't get your dick wet in a hurricane, you dumb motherfucker. Get off of my phone line. Walt's oh, calling well, me in an hour. I feel like you're insulting me. I don't like it. <laughs> get fucked, Bob. I'll talk to you later. You get fucked, Spaghetti. I'll see you at the reunion. Ah, Bill for a dog coffin. Bill for a dog coffin. Bill for a dog... Maria, did you... <laughs> Call the dog coffin guy and tell him to order more dog coffin. Uh, hang on, the phone's ringing. Hello, Robert Vince, star of Air Punch <laughs> writing team. Sorry, I'm really, really obligated to put that in there. Yeah, it's uh, Spaghetti the Coco. Who? You remember me? Spaghetti the Coco. Spaghetti Coco. Are you that guy what's bringing me my brand new Armani shoes that I bought with my real Air Bud money? No, I'm the guy who put you on the fucking map with the best goddamn dog in the universe, Buddy, Air Buddy, the dog that shoots baskets and whatnot. Oh, you're that Spaghetti. Hello, yeah, Spaghetti. Yeah. How How's your movie? You you were writing some kind of movie about, I, I don't fucking know, yeah, a monkey yeah, that uh, uh, snowboards? Actually, let me write that down. That sounds like a great idea for a movie. God damn, he's got all the good ideas for movies. No, I, I'm writing the, 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 the Raging Bull. I got, I got two pages written. <laughs> How many pages you need for a movie? Three? I hope it's not more than three. Anyway, I was just calling. 
Because I don't give a shit about you or what you do or what your goddamn company does. You, Disney, Keith, don't go fuck yourselves in your dick holes. But, look, I just need to know where my royalty checks are. Because the contract I signed said all the net profits are Airbud, of which, to my estimation, there's about $20 million. And I thought I was getting about 10%. And if I can do math right, that'd be about $4 million coming Spaghetti to Coco's way. Spaghetti, do you have a copy of that contract? No. Do you remember the day you signed that contract? Not really, no. What you signed <laughs> was a receipt for 16 hot dogs I had to go out and buy the crew because I couldn't stand to be in your presence for one more fucking minute. You stupid meathead. What? You thought that was a contract. It was for fourteen ninety nine. Well, now, hold on. Do you have a copy of that contract? No, I do not have a copy of that contract. Ah, neither of us got no copies. But you Therefore, know who it's does? your word against my word. Disney's Human Resources Department, of which I have only fucked half of the secretaries. The other half are men. So, I mean, you know, sue me, but I know what I like. And I like <laughs> lady parts. <laughs> Look, I don't... I don't want to get a weeds about no contracts or anything. I just know that you owe me money, and I want that money, because I need it to hire someone to write a script unrelated to the other script I was talking about earlier. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Did Raging Bud <laughs> encounter some difficulties? No, no. I, I, I finished that one a long time ago. I've made, like, I wrote, like, nine movies since then. I wrote a movie basically like uh, Terminator meets Princess Diaries. Uh... <laughs> I made a movie is like uh, Toy Story meets The Shining. <laughs> like I got a bunch of movies; they're all featuring Air Bud. It's gonna be great. You know, spaghetti. Uh, you can go, you can go fuck right off. But I, I do have a question. You do know you can write movies that are not just combinations of two other movies, right? That's news to me, to be honest. I did. I thought that's how movies got made. I tell you that because I am supremely confident that you are completely incapable of writing anything other than your own name and okay, the words okay. Air Bud. Okay, so you're saying there can be movies that aren't just a combination of two movies? Yeah, right? I mean, a Air Bud is not a no. combination of two movies. No, hold on, I got, an I, I got an idea here. All I know I got about idea. is writing dogs about movies, though. I mean, movies about the... F I'm so fucking high on cocaine. I got an idea. Forrest Gump. <laughs> Ghostbusters. Wizard of Oz. Bam, three movies. How's about that? You ever think of that? You learned that in movie production school? How's about you go get fucked? <laughs> There's no money coming your way, so I hope you're writing these yourself, and I hope your fucking typewriter doesn't need any goddamn typewriter click, grease, whatever the fuck typewriters click, need. In fact, how, do you know where to buy typewriter grease? Because <laughs> I've been clicking and clacking and nothing's happening. <laughs> I write my movies in Chinese intern blood, so I wouldn't have a fucking clue. Well, look, I'll see you in court, Bob, you goddamn sack of shit. Uh, speaking of which, how does one go about seeing someone else in court? <laughs> Call a lawyer. I got I got Call one in what? mind for you. His name is Vincent What's... Robert. And it's the same number as my number, except when you ask for him, he picks up instead of me, you dumb fucking piece of shit. Oh, uh, well, you, you really screwed yourself over by giving me that advice, because that's going to go poorly for you. I have left condoms under benches in Central Park that have more value to society than you have, you stupid son of a bitch. And I will thoroughly enjoy the day in court that you and I are both going to have. I didn't follow all that, to be honest, because I was already thinking about other movies what which I could maybe combine <laughs> and put a dog in, because that's... <laughs> That's the only thing I know how to do, I guess. I don't I'll know. tell you what, I if can... you ever write any movies about any kind of dogs, you mail them to me and I'll let you know, because we may fucking hate each other, but I know dog movies. <laughs> you write them to me and I promise I won't steal a single word of any of it, I swear. Stupid I feel, like I, I feel like I can't trust you, Bob, so why don't you get fucked? I'll talk to you later. You Send me those fucked? checks. I'll see you in court, and also lunch after court. Ah, this really is the life. I got so much dog money, I could kill and eat dogs, and I don't even like eating dog. I think it's too gamey. Oh, there goes my phone again. I sure hope this isn't fucking so good. <laughs> Hello, Robert Vince's office. Robert hey. Vince speaking. 
Hey, it's spaghetti de coco. Who? Spaghetti de fucking coco. You know who it is. I'm the guy, what with the dog and the movie, the Air Bud movie, <laughs> of which there are now multiple Air Bud movies. I'm the guy whose back you stood on to make your goddamn millions, you yacht sailing motherfucker. Are you that guy what greases up my yacht? <laughs> no. I'm the guy with what which money you have to afford to get a guy to grease your yacht. Oh, that's Spaghetti de Coco. Okay, I got a Spaghetti de Coco who greases my yacht and a Spaghetti de Coco who cleans the cum out of my yacht, so you're gonna understand why I get confused. I don't think there's that many Spaghetti de Cocos. I think you're fucking with me. <laughs> you don't you know. know what else I think? You don't know. You I don't know what else Hollywood. I think you arranged to have my dog's goddamn leg cut off. That's what I think, Bob. You son of a bitch. Your dog's leg got cut off? Yeah, yeah. You know how many dogs... I mean, how many legs dogs are supposed to have? Four. Guess how many legs my dog has now. Do you want me to actually guess? You're going to tell you, me. Yeah, why don't you guess? Why don't you guess? Go ahead, Bob. You son of a bitch. <laughs> One leg. Well, no, you overshot it, Bob. <laughs> he's got three legs still. But that's one less than he's supposed to have. So he's missing a leg. So someone cut off his leg. I don't know who it was. I think it was you, you goddamn son of a bitch. Look, what, why would I possibly cut off Air Bud's leg? I, I love the fucking dog. Nobody's yeah. licked peanut butter off my balls as well as Air Bud did. That's the first I heard of this. That I, I didn't know what those production meetings, you know, trailer were about on the set of Air Bud 1. Yeah, there was but a reason I told you to wait outside. It wasn't just because I hate your fucking guts. Well, I I think the reason you would want to take off one of Air Bud's legs is probably to stymie the, the movie that I had in mind, which was basically Star Wars meets Bambi meets Rosemary's Baby meets the birds meets Pirates of the Caribbean which hasn't been released yet. It's in development. They're talking about getting Johnny Depp involved with it. I think that's a great idea. But yeah, it's going to be a mismatch of all that shit. It's going to be great. And at the center of it is going to be a three-legged dog named goddamn Buddy. If you take off any more of his legs, I swear to God, I will take off one of your legs. It's a, I don't know. Look, I didn't cut off Air Bud's leg. I defeated you in court. I've made five... How many Air Bud movies did I make? Let me check here. One, two, three, four... I made four and a half Air Bud movies. That's right, number five. I'm going to teach him how to fucking play volleyball. <laughs> Next. Volleyball? You can't do that. That's sacrilege. Buddy doesn't know how to play volleyball. <laughs> the last thing I give a fucking shit about is you and your stupid three-legged dog, and I swear that upon my dog cutting, the dog leg cutting hacksaw with my name engraved in it, which I definitely did not leave at the scene and have to go back for. You know, I wish I could catch you admitting that you did this, <laughs> but I can't for the life of me. I don't know how I'm ever going to get evidence that would suggest that you were responsible for it. But in Spaghetti's heart of heart, he knows that you done did it. I'm going to come after you. I'm going to get you, Bob. You better sleep with one eye open because Spaghetti is coming for you. Well... <laughs> I'll just make sure to be sleeping on my yacht where I know you and your fucking dumb three-legged dog can't swim to. Because dogs need four legs to swim, Spaghetti. Do the spaghetti. math. If I'm on my spaghetti. yacht, I'm invincible. Spaghetti can't stop me there. Spaghetti knows how to swim, even though he don't got no four legs like no dog. Listen, Spaghetti. I swim real good. Let me. I know the backstroke. Listen, Spaghetti. I'll backstroke out to your yacht. Let me warn you right now. If you come at me in any fucking way, I'm going to cut off one of your goddamn legs, you motherfucker. And you're yeah, only going to have three legs, over many legs an actual human has. All I deal with fair, is Chinese slaves here at Disney, so I wouldn't know. And they're less than human, and we got lots of them. And Walt likes it when they lick his taint, so we don't ask no fucking questions. By the way, Walt Disney's still alive. It was a shock to me, too. And if you tell well, anybody, he'll have cut off both your legs. To be fair, I'm honestly afraid, and I'm going to hang up now. Yeah, that's what I fucking thought. Because I'm Robert Vince. I am the king of Airbud. And I will not brook some peasant trying to upstage me here in the prime of my life and on top of my game. So how about you take your three-legged dog 
and go enter a sack race, you dumb motherfucker. Clickety clack, typing away here, coming up with different movies I could combine to make an Air Bud movie. Let's see. Clickety clack, we got The Exorcist, and we got Baby Geniuses. Bam, that's another great idea. Air Bud number 23. Oh, I keep punching him out. Oh, looks like my phone's ringing. Wonder who that could be. Hello? Spaghetti to Coco here. Yeah, hi. I'm looking for the guy what sells me dog cancer. Uh, Spaghetti to Coco, the gentleman who just had his beloved dog die of cancer. Oh, Spaghetti to Coco. Hi, Spaghetti. How you feeling? How's Buddy? Well, Buddy's dead. He died of cancer. Is, oh, is this Bob? Uh, is this Bob this Vince? This is Robert Vince. I am so sorry to hear that Buddy died of cancer and or mysterious circumstances that I definitely have no knowledge of whatsoever. Yeah, I'm, I'm wondering why you're calling me because, I mean, first of all, you cut off Buddy's leg just to spite my face. You can't prove and that I cut off Buddy's leg, no matter what the blood samples from my dog leg cutting off saw would reveal. I really wish there was something you would say that would incriminate you, but I really can't think of anything. Yeah, it's a real but mystery. Now, the th- I'm starting to think, because Buddy was doing really well, and then all of a sudden, he got all cancered up in a cancer hole, and he died. Died real fast. He suffered a lot, Bob. And I'm wondering, <laughs> Bob, now, I want you to be straight with spaghetti. I know spaghetti is only straight before it's cooked, but I want you to be straight with me. Now, not like cooked spaghetti, like uncooked spaghetti. I want you to be straight with me. Did you get buddy cancer? How do you think, spaghetti, you dumb motherfucker, how do you think I would have given your dog cancer? What do you think? I just snuck into the kennel where he was sleeping and I jammed a big vial of dog cancer that I had one of my Disney friends get for me just straight up his asshole. The worst kind of dog cancer there is. And then all of a sudden he dies of cancer when I call here to draw his fist away from myself. Now don't you sound ridiculous saying all that? Well, I didn't say all that, but it that sounds ridiculous. Oh, you definitely said all that. I did? Oh, shit. I think I incriminated myself. <laughs> Remember the contract you signed? Wait, you promised... That... Wait a minute, that was a receipt for hot dogs, never mind. You didn't sign no fucking contract. No, no, I remember the receipt for hot dogs. Yeah, it's fourteen ninety nine. <laughs> you sent me out to get hot dogs, I signed for it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What does it got to do with anything? <laughs> I remember that like the 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 day I first asked out a uh, Carrie. What's if you finish name? that fucking remember. story, I'm I gonna give you her cancer. Sweet fucking senior ass. If I have God to hear that, that story one more fucking time, I I haven't seen you in 15 years, and I'm still hearing that fucking story. Carrie, goddamn Russell was her name, and having a sweet fucking tight little ass was her game. Have you seen a woman in since that day in high school? <laughs> no, I have not. That's why I cling to that memory. <laughs> Have you seen a man? <laughs> Have you seen anybody that wasn't a fucking dog's puckered asshole? She held my hand once. <laughs> and that's my favorite memory. Oh, uh, well, look. I just call in to throw off suspicion. At, I don't mean that. I say that's a fancy producer way to say that I wanted to say that I'm sorry you stupid fucking basketball playing... Idiot, retarded, that's right, I said retarded because I'm evil, dog, dying of cancer. You you can take your goddamn condolences and shove them so far up your fucking asshole, you gotta chew them and swallow them again, you goddamn son of a bitch. Because you gave my dog cancer, I know it, just like I know that Carrie Russell had the sweetest goddamn ass to see in your class of fucking San Mateo High 1977. <laughs> it's a fact. It's a known goddamn fact. <laughs> you know, I once gave Gwyneth Paltrow a dirty Sanchez at an Oscar party, but the highlight of my fucking life has been ruining your fucking career. <laughs> you stupid Italian... I don't even know if you're actually Italian son of a bitch. Hey, hey, don't you dare not call me not Italian. My mama did not name me Spaghetti because I ain't Italian. <laughs> and also, like, I know you ruined my career. I know you're a fucking asshole. But everyone knows, at every Oscar party, <laughs> at least 30 to 40 people give Gwyneth Paltrow a dirty Sanchez. 
<laughs> you ain't so fucking special, Bob. Hey, it doesn't matter if I only got into that party <laughs> because I climbed in through a window and I was wearing a suit and nobody questioned it because it turns out why a bud makes a lot of money. I get zero respect anywhere in this fucking company. That doesn't mean anything. <laughs> Just because Look, I was number 38 out of 40 to give Gwyneth Paltrow that dirty Sanchez, that doesn't mean anything. I was before the janitors and after the busboy, so as far as I'm concerned, I fucking made it. While you're sitting there with a dog that's got died of cancer that I definitely didn't give it, writing movies about fucking, I don't know, Air Bud's puppies that are finding treasure or some shit. I'm gonna write that down, Look, that's genius. No, I'm gonna write down first, clickety clack. God damn, I don't have typewriter grease. <laughs> Fuck. I should have ordered it ten years ago. Like you suggested. But look, we all know the pinnacle of show business, which you are nowhere near, you goddamn son of a bitch, is giving Meryl Streep a dirty Sanchez. The only man who's had that privilege is Steven goddamn Spielberg. So you calm yourself down. Calm your tits. Goddamn Bob Vince. I am two Air Bud movies away from being in the same room as Meryl Streep. I almost said Meryl Lynch, because I'm thinking of money all the time, and in that regard, we are very similar. Oh, yeah. The next Air Bud sequel, Treasure Bud, Pup Star, fucking whatever, co-star Meryl Streep as a goddamn dog I'm catcher. writing down all those names. I'm writing down every one of those fucking names. No, don't you dare. I, I'm copywriting things right now, clickety clack. God damn it, I don't have the typewriter grease. Fuck. This is the stupidest thing you've ever done. Uh, Get fucked, Bob. I'll talk to you later. No, wait. I want you to know. Uh, the night has not fallen on Spaghetti to Coco and Air Bud family. I told you you're not even allowed to say Air Bud anymore. You take your fucking royalty check... And you can talk about the dog as long as you never use the words Air Bud. I'll talk about a dog, and I'll use his goddamn name, as long as his progeny lives. What the fuck are you because talking tell about? You, everybody knows but he died without a wife. <laughs> of course everybody knows that. It's a very sad story. <laughs> but I almost I know shed a tear when I was injecting him with that cancer. I really wish you would say something incriminating. <laughs> but I'll tell you something... Nobody knows except me and most definitely Buddy. I got in the freezer, a chest freezer down in the basement. I got myself 11 liters of Buddy's semen. You telling me the fucking truth? I'm telling you fucking checkmate. <laughs> Did you jerk off that fucking dog? I got 11 liters of Buddy's semen. You got semen. 11, 11 liters? I can make so many Air Buds. There'll be Air Bud movies... Like you never seen, I'll combine 18 different movies together. Because I'll have 18 different Air Buds. They'll each play, I won't even need humans to star in it. It'll be only fucking Air Bud puppies, <laughs> goddammit. Because I got so much fucking buddy cum. <laughs> you ain't seen the last of Spaghetti to Coco. He's coming back in a bit way. He gonna give Gwyneth the Paltrow a Dirty Sanchez at the next Oscar party. I'm warning you, Spaghetti. You better flush that fucking cum down the drain. Because <laughs> that's some bad fucking juju. Don't you cross Disney, motherfucker. I tried to warn you all those years ago. You're gonna live to regret this, Spaghetti, you son of a bitch. Now, yeah, I'm gonna go yeah, get well, in my car real fast and drive to Seawall because I got a real situation that's unrelated to your fucking cum. Walt Disney could lick my frozen fucking taint. I don't, I don't know why I froze my taint, but I'm sure Walt would like it because he's also frozen. That makes sense. I already hung up, you dumb son of a bitch. You get fucked, Bob. I'll be seeing you on the red carpet with the best movie ever. I don't know why you'll be on the red carpet too. I'll invite you just to spite you, you son of a bitch. Clickety clack of these spaghetti working on new movie ideas. I got fucking nothing. I mean, oh shit, Rugrats combined with fucking Jenna Jameson porn. I don't know, man. I'm out of ideas. Oh shit, the phone's ringing. Hey, spaghetti. Spaghetti here. Hello, spaghetti. How you doing? Oh, I'm doing great. Is this Bob? Is this Bob? I'm, I'm doing. I'm. Uh, I'm just relaxing. 
on my Lakeside property, of which I have several. This is, I'd prefer you to call me Mr. Vince Spaghetti, because our relationship has now ascended to a level of which I no longer consider you an equal, and by an equal I mean barely a human. Hello, are you there, or did somebody give you dog cancer out of a... <laughs> Out of a vial of dog cancer that I keep next to my desk in case I ever need to give a dog cancer. No, sorry, I was just distracted by the gleaming from the lakeside water on my Oscar, which they gave to me preemptively for the script I wrote about the movie I'm going to make. Spaghetti. That's how they do it now. When you when you walk about your lakeside property, Spaghetti, do you ever go down into the basement where you got a white chest freezer with... The words, definitely not, buddies come, spray-painted in orange on the top of it. And you usually lock it with two little padlocks and keys that you keep at a chain around your neck. And then there was that one day when you were holding on to buddies come and thinking about the good times and crying and maybe opening it up and sniffing it a little to try and remember what buddy smelled like. And then you maybe forgot... To put the keys back on your neck and left them on there and the padlocks was unlocked. And then you went to bed and ignored the several hours of grunting you heard from the basement. <laughs> Do you ever think about a day like that, spaghetti old friend? That's a surprising amount of detail about yesterday. Yeah, I write dog movies. <laughs> dog movies for a living. <laughs> so, isn't it funny how... <laughs> You keep all the buddies come in diet, caffeine-free Coke, two-liter bottles, which I question I how clean they were. It, I mean, to be fair, I don't, I don't think that's surprising at all, because you really don't want too much sugar in your diet. It could give you diabetes, and too much caffeine could be bad for your heart in the long run. I really try to maintain like a healthy physique, physique kind of thing. I don't think it's... Oh, I like putting dog cum in it. I, yeah, maybe that's weird. Maybe I should have gotten, like, a sterile container. <laughs> in retrospect, that's a good idea. I'm going to take notes. Click it. Fuck typewriter grease. I got to order. <laughs> Did you ever stop and think, what if, I don't know, somebody came in and replaced all of my dog cum <laughs> with human cum? And it's, you ever think how astonishing it is that dog cum and human cum look a lot, of, a lot alike? I have thought it's astonishing how much they do look alike. You have not ever even seen human cum, you fucking dickless motherfucker. I do blindfold myself when I masturbate. You're right about that. So, all right. To be honest, I haven't seen no human cum. But I never, I never thought about how much dog cum and human cum look the same. And I'm worried about what you're telling me now, because you got a lot of detail in here. What are you trying to tell me, Bob? Are you trying to tell me you want to hire me back to Disney? <laughs> So we can make new movies? Have you... Because I'd like you to tell me that. <laughs> Have you used any of Buddy's cum to what put inside a lady dogs and make them pregnant? I, uh, that's on the calendar for next Thursday. <laughs> you ever stop and wonder, Spaghetti, what would happen if instead of dog cum, <laughs> it was human cum that you injected into a lady dog? Maybe from an incredibly successful, if desperate for attention, Disney executive what makes movies about some fucking dog that smacks around balls with his face and also plays no, various sports. I'm not sure what you're trying to tell me. I traded your dog cum for my human cum, you stupid son of a bitch. Bob, no, you did not. No, <laughs> that would there. be... Go down and taste it. Taste it right now and tell me that's not my cum. God, you fucking... I will not say whether or not I could taste the difference between dog and human cum. I will not implicate myself over the phone. Uh, you and I both know you can tell the difference. And you and I both know without that cum spaghetti, you're nothing. That's the final nail in the spaghetti the cocoa coffin. You know what? And all you it took me did? was six... Hours of vigorous masturbation. <laughs> to swirl up my cum with your dog's cum and make it utterly unusable. Or oh, it's going to produce some kind of horrifying man-dog hybrid. Which would probably be an affront to God. But that sounds more like Spaghetti's problem than Robert's problem. You know what? You think I wouldn't take the risk. <laughs> Spaghetti is willing to take the risk to make the next great American movie. If Spaghetti needs to take 
a two liter bottle of diet <laughs> caffeine free Coke, which is a mixture of dog semen and Bob Vince's semen, and pump it up into a dog vagina with a risk that it might make a horrifying creature that deserves to be killed on sight. I'll take that risk because there's a chance they'll be the most beautiful dog in the world and he can shoot baskets almost as good as his good old dad. And there's a chance he's going to be in the next big movie, which is going to be a cross between The Sixth Sense and Lord of the Rings. And maybe... Maybe a little splash of uh, Devil Wears Prada in there. <laughs> oh, spaghetti. Watch and it. you know what? You know what? If I get a half man, half dog, I'll put him in that movie too. That's what Spaghetti's going to do. Ah, oh, spaghetti. Knowing you and stealing all of your ideas and catapulting myself off of you into stardom. Again, I wish you would say something incriminating. <laughs> Has been the greatest experience in my life. <laughs> and I have made more money than I know what to do with. I've made so much fucking money, it would have been easier to give you money than to even have these phone calls. But I've thoroughly enjoyed stripping you of everything that you loved <laughs> and watching you slowly fade into the obscurity you were always destined for. You dumb, idiot, stupid motherfucker who I'm not even convinced is actually named Spaghetti. I think your name's oh. Kevin or something lame like that. You don't think I'm named Spaghetti? You don't think I'm named Spaghetti? I don't you have to care if your name's Spaghetti or not. My mother had the hair of an angel, which is why she named me Spaghetti. Well, I fucked so don't you... I fucked your mother so many times, I spent more cumulative time inside of her than the nine months you were in there. Oh, well, I was premature. I was only in there eight months, which... Also would, yeah, you would come out on top, too. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> and while Damn I was it. railing her, she told me the pediatrician had to convince her to get an abortion until you were seven. That, that stopped before kindergarten. Although, to be fair, I might not have started kindergarten until I was eight. They did not want to let me in. <laughs> to be, and to be fair, I, I think I mentioned it before, but Carrie Russell to go with a cute butt. <laughs> she was a senior in high school. I was a sophomore. But I was 26. Hey, do you know, by the way, Carrie Russell, do you know she cleans yachts now? And guess who's the yacht she likes to clean the most? I don't know, Tom Cruise? I don't know how this is relevant. It's mine, you dumb piece of shit. And when I say what? yacht, I'm talking about my dick and my balls. And also my yacht, because, I mean, I would never actually fuck somebody who I wasn't paying for it on different reason. <laughs> So, not only did I take your dog's leg, and then his life, and also fucked your mother, I also fucked that woman whose name I already forgot, because I got holes in my brain from all my Air Bud money bought cocaine. The, the girl you've been telling me about since we filmed that first fucking movie that I don't even remember the name of anymore, with that dog with his stupid face, and I don't even know, you don't even register for me anymore, Spaghetti. You are a blip on the radar of my existence. And I hope you enjoy that cum, because my cum is the last thing you're ever going to get from me, and I hope it keeps you warm in the night when you're cuddling it, trying to hold on to whatever memories of that stupid fucking dog you ever had. Oh, well, Bob, it's been good talking to you. If you ever want to make a movie again... Just give me a ring. I got plenty of ideas in the can. So I know we've had our differences. <laughs> but I'm always ready <sighs> to earn a dollar. Because <laughs> my name is Spaghetti the Coco. Oh. oh my god. Wow, those were some long calls. <laughs> <laughs> I, why did they... I feel like they hated each other after, like, the second one. Why do they just keep calling each other? <laughs> I don't know. It doesn't make sense. I swear. It, it's just, it's, they're the shadow each other cast. Robert Vince, <laughs> it took the path of success, and Spaghetti took the path of failure. It's really, like, <laughs> it's just, I, if you just look at the history, I mean, it's really amazing. Like, they're yin and yang. <laughs> it's an exploration of 
the, the human psyche. Robert Vince and Spaghetti Coco are yin and yang, and the line separating them is fucking a basketball playing dog. <laughs> and, like, it's really one of the more amazing stories of human history, I think. Yeah, it's... Uh, uh, the depth to all of this is beyond my it's understanding. It's mind-boggling. It's beyond reason. That there's this uh, much uh, drama uh, around the Airbud <laughs> production. And I think, yeah, again, with, with a lot of movies, I, I don't know if we could ever go this deep again, mm. but there might be a decent amount of stuff we could dredge up that'd be worth talking about. I feel like we could have talked about Ja Rule for a long time in the Fire Festival. You, you mentioned yeah. that. I think that's true. We could have... There is that. And and there's oh, just God. so much stuff around B-movie. <laughs> Fuck it. But yeah, I think, I think we could definitely, when we have a topic we want to talk about, we could keep having some adventures in the cold. I, I think that could definitely be a good spinoff. I mean, um, maybe we should find some smaller phone calls. <laughs> we should get uh, fucking uh, Walter Snowden, uh, William Snow, uh, our unnamed contact to uh, <laughs> find us some fucking <laughs> some phone calls from, I don't know, actual comedy professionals. <laughs> I could also try to do some editing magic and only put in the good stuff. No, no. <laughs> Let it in. <laughs> hey, look, that is the oral history of Spaghetti and Robert. <laughs> and I think it's important. That's true. That is true. Uh, All right, let's, I think we've, let's do our we've, outro. We've exhausted pretty much everything anyone could ever say about <laughs> Kevin Spaghetti de, Co- de Coco. Whatever, I don't fucking like Spaghetti de Coco. Discucho. I don't know, man. Hey. <sighs> well, that was Bonus Adventures in the Colon, brought to you by The Bowels of Netflix, the podcast. Thank you for listening. <laughs> We're not sure exactly what that was. <laughs> Comedy gold? Comedy silver, at least. Maybe. Comedy bronze. No, I don't know. We're like sixth place. Think it's like, a, is like, it going to like tin and aluminum? They should do that. Oh, that'd be great. The aluminum foil metal. Right, that's last place, aluminum foil. That'd be good. But yeah, so we're the aluminum foil comedy team. <laughs> um, yeah, we, we hope you enjoyed that. Airbud was just too fascinating to not get into all this. So, uh, yeah. D- thank you for listening. If you made it all the way through this bonus episode, you're obviously a devoted fan. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we're, we're the Bowels of Netflix. Uh, you can find us on Facebook, Twitter. Those are both at Bowels of Netflix. We do have our Gmail account. That's Bowels of Netflix at gmail.com. Please feel free to drop us a line and let us <laughs> <laughs> let us know how much you love this bonus episode. If you have any ideas for... If there's anything we talk about that you feel like you want to examine more, let us know and maybe we'll uh, take a look and see if we can get a bonus episode out of it. I don't think we'll ever get one as long as this again. <laughs> <laughs> the sordid details of the Airbud story. There, there's, there could not be more depth. The, the only thing that's missing is like a whirlwind romance. <laughs> I think that's when Spaghetti milked Buddy. <laughs> oh right, that's the wor- That's the whirlwind romance. <laughs> oh, how quickly we forget. <laughs> <laughs> there's uh, still and, uh, his cum. I want to own oh, yeah, Airbud's it, cum. <laughs> yeah, I. We should find him on social media and I don't know offer him like 20 bucks oh he'll value it higher than that yeah but we I don't know we start low and meet somewhere reasonable I'd chip in a hundred bucks for Airbud's I don't think he would sell it I think he feels it has too much value but I want to know yeah, what his yeah, price point right. is right <laughs> we yeah we'll, we'll definitely get there <laughs> uh but, uh, and yeah, uh, so any music you might have heard in this episode is courtesy of Incompetech.com from Mr. Kevin MacLeod. He has a bunch of stuff that's uh, Creative Commons licensed for free as long as you give him credit. So if you have a creative project, you should check out his website. Um, you can find some stuff that's useful for you as it's been useful for us. We really hope you've enjoyed listening. Don't forget to rate, subscribe, and tell your friends. It's a small-time gig for us, but we really enjoy doing it. Uh, we obviously had fun tonight. Um, and we, we'd like to get more listeners. We'd like to keep this thing going. So, And our regular yeah. episode will be coming out at the regular time on Sunday, which I believe it yep. will be... Well, I guess we're not quite sure what it'll be yet for me, because I have a choice between two. So we're still right. in the air. Oh, I got a lot to say. So, 
it'll be an interesting couple episodes coming up, so make sure to stay tuned. But yeah, our regular episodic feed will resume on Sunday, and any of our bonus adventures in the colon will just be interspersed throughout the week. But you can always count on us being here Sunday to talk about a new movie. That's disgusting and horrifying. Thank you so much for listening. We love you. We'll always love you. And uh, Have a good night. And Spaghetti, you know what? You need to hear all this story, my friend. And I'm, my support is always behind you. If we could arrange an interview with Spaghetti to Coco... He... I would shit my pants because he must have meant he did not listen to this episode. <laughs> oh, Rob, find Robert Vince. He's the linchpin. <laughs> Smell you later. <laughs> <laughs>